I literally have enough understanding to design an electric drive for an electric car that is self-charging as it drives. And it's uncanny because it shares one feature with Bedini's uh, Tesla switching circuit in that instead of having two batches of batteries, one that runs the other in an alternating fashion, instead it's got two motors, one acting as a generator, which runs constantly, um, and the other uh, runs as the drive motor to drive the car and varies its speed based on the needs of the car, the driver, uh, to move the car. And the circuitry is the Barbosa and Lille circuitry. Because the Barbosa and Lille circuitry, I can see w why it was called a captor device, because it's a keeper. Whatever energy you give it, it keeps it. And um, the only reason why you would lose it is if you don't need it. So it's an energy on demand situation. Um, the more you demand of it, the more it keeps. It holds on to for you. So that it, it becomes a recycled energy situation. And that's why it's over unity, because it, it um, facilitates the recycling of energy. But if you've got a two-motor system, one of them generating power, then that's where your power is coming from. You don't need a AC sine wave inverter on the left side of uh, Clarence's um, schematic because it's coming from the load. Because you've got two loads, one that's actually your demand load and one that's your supply load, feeding the system. And of course you need voltage references, that's what the grounding rods represent which can be turned into, or converted, into uh, two references, one in w which the antenna, the aerial of the car, serves as a replacement for the four grounding rods from the neutral of plug number one, and the massive iron structure of the car serves as the captor ground for the neutral of plug number one. Um, what else? Right, and there are a few other tweaks. I'm learning how to put diodes and capacitors into the system to improve efficiency because you want phase lock. You want um, all the parts, because you've got a three-part system. You've got the power circuit, you've got the um, the primary circuit that drives the circuit, and then you've got the secondary, the keeper, that keeps the abundant supply of energy on hand prior to its use. It's kind of like a, a conditioning uh, situation. If you need lots of energy, it gets put there, and then you know where to go to get it. You don't get it from the battery or the generator. You know, you get it from the keeper, the electric keeper. So you got three different circuits, and they all have to be in phase. And Barbosa and Leal is designed to do that, but there is room for improvement to improve efficiency, because every time you improve efficiency, a little here, a little there, it boosts your over-unity. Um... And, I, you know, in a sense, that's the only thing missing from our machines is efficiency. In a sense. Because we're not allowed to do certain things. Oh, no, you can, you're not supposed to do that. That's crazy. What, why would you want to do that? That's idiotic. It's not going to work. It'll make things worse. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> that's how over unity works. By doing things that seem so ridiculous that engineers and physicists would say, Huh? Why Why you do that? That's... That's just monkey business. That's not going to do any, do any good. And before you know it, you see the levels rise and it goes over unity. So the, it's really a question of efficiency that's lacking in our machines. So I can think of two improvements that I can contribute to the situation, plus adapting it. Because when I bought my RAV4 EV2002 from uh, used, <laughs> I'm the third owner, I had envisioned that somehow 
Eric Dollard's analog computer in LMD mode would be used to take energy from the electric motor as its source to fund itself, to feed itself. And essentially that's what I figured out how to do. It's just there's a need for two motors because I realized that in order to get 60 cycles, the higher the frequency, that's the other thing. This An AC system is more efficient than a DC system, but you don't have to be tied to 60 cycles. You can have it anything you want. And the higher the frequency, the more efficient the system runs at, generally speaking, as a general idea. So you don't want to be tied to 60 cycles. But you do want an AC system driving the circuitry. And so um, you can't have an AC sine wave inverter feeding the system anymore because that's locked in at 60 cycles. So you have your own generator based on its RPM. The faster it spins, the higher is it the frequency. And the more power you're going to have, right? You're going to be able to accelerate better, more efficiently. And then I did the math. I thought, well, wait a minute. RPM is one thing, one time frame. And cycles per second is another time frame, difference by a uh, factor of 360. So what's 360 times 60? It's close to 20,000, or it's over 20,000. Actually, it's close to, uh, it's over 21,000. It's close to 22,000 RPM. That's a lot. <laughs> when I think of uh, what Jim Murray was running his transforming generator, I think it was at 18,000 RPM, as I recall. So that's, he's got it there, he's, he's, he, you know. So that's generally around 20,000 that it's got to run at to be comparable to what our devices run at. And that's just comparable. So that's why I realized there's no way this is going to to work on just a one motor system. That's what I envisioned, because out of my stupidity, you know, out of my ignorance, right? What do I know? But I had a vision, right? And it was half. It was half the vision, plus the other half is the circuit. But, you know, aside from the circuit, which is, of course, very important, it's got to be a two-motor system. One motor, because you've got to have somebody setting the beat. You know, I was thinking of the circuitry minus the AC sine wave inverter, and, oh, it was going to be tied to the earth. Oh, very nice, but what's setting the beat? There's, there's, there's no orchestra conductor setting the beat. So... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, it's safe. You won't get electrocuted. Yeah, and you won't have any power either. <laughs> so, so I realized I'm going to have to concede a little something here and have a little high voltage, you know? A little, uh, oh, you know? <laughs> well, don't worry. You don't have to make it. You don't have to deal with it. Just think about it. You know? Okay. Hell, let somebody else make it. You just come up with the idea. Okay, a good idea. Get some investors. Ah, see? So this... So here's my idea. It needs two motors. One acting as an alternator or generator to generate the frequency, most importantly, around 60 cycles a second minimum, if not more, but minimally, somewhere around in there, you know, 50, 60 cycles a second. And then the other is the actual drive motor that moves the car in traffic, you know, from point A to point B. Um... And then Bar the Barbosa and Leal circuitry to provide the energy on demand. But you're feeding the energy into the circuit and then extracting the energy from the circuit. So you probably need two voltage references, and the car chassis is going to be one, and the aerial is going to be the other. Um, and then you need enhancements to make sure you improve efficiency, because there's no point in inheriting a circuit if you don't can't tweak it to make it slightly better. You know, I, I'm not looking at big improvements. You know, I'm not, I'm not look, I'm not expecting to be an inventor. You know, who could come up with this great idea. The only idea I come up with is that Barbosa and Leal, Barbosa and Leal is a reincarnation of Tesla's special generator because it has two features. One is the very long um, coil wound length that William Line speculated. He doesn't know this. He speculated it's got an ELF, a very low frequency, which means a very long wire, which is the same as an electric keeper, because it can't see how long it is, it's, so it's infinitely long. So that's based on speculation, but the other an, um, similitude or simil similarity to Tesla's special generator is based on a fact that we know that for every 200 pounds of iron added 
connected to the device, one horsepower is added to it, its output, um, above and beyond whatever it's putting out. So the weight of the car is going to matter, you know. You, now you can go for an electric car. You don't have to, you know, think in terms of an electric car, oh, we got to reduce the weight. No, in increase it. Just make sure it's a lot of iron, a lot of ferromagnetizable iron instead of lightweight aluminum like Tesla Motors uses. Um, because you're going to need that iron. You're going to need it to serve as your reference, to create a voltage reference between that and the aerial. <laughs> so you can pull in more than just radio stations. Now you can create a voltage referencing, a differential between the aerial and the chassis of the car. Now whether or not the chassis of the car has to drape a few grounding straps to the earth, I don't know. Because it's very hit and miss. You know, we're given asphalt. We used to have concrete roads. See, I bet somebody knows something. If they had highly classified the patent and taken it out of public ve venue, the patent, if, we're, if we assume that Tesla did go ahead and patent his special generator, then they know how it works. And so, of course, they're going to come up with petroleum-based asphalt uh, roads that are basically pure dielectrics, you know, they, they're in, they insulate you from the earth, and so then you can't use the earth to put a special generator in an electric car and have it produce more energy than it consumes. Duh. So you're going to be limited to the mass of the car alone, and you're not going to be able to make use of the earth in addition to. Um, you're going to have a hard time using the car as your mere common ground without earth ground to supplement. And that's, that's a challenge. Right there, that's a challenge. Um, I can see right away. Um, and I don't have an answer. <laughs> I do not have an answer. I'm sure UFOs uh, create their own earth ground just by their ionization of the surrounding airspace surrounding their vehicle. Um, and that's not something the FCC is going to allow within the context of motor vehicles. Well, you, know, you know, we make an exception for the military-based UFOs, but consumer cars, no, 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 no. We're too close to, uh, oh, we want to be able to run our radio in our car. Yes, of course. We don't want to create an ionizing field. So then we have to think in terms of what did he, uh, Richard Hackenberger do after the FCC raid, the second raid. He created a controlled, ionized environment inside the EV gray motor chassis uh, between the aluminum chassis lined with Teflon and the uh, supporting aluminum pieces that were supporting, I think it was the rotor coils, and those were insulated from the rest of the internal structure of the um, EV gray motor. And then he flushed the inside of the, that motor housing with compressed air to make sure that no sparking, no arcing would occur, and a voltage difference would be set up between the chassis of the motor and the supports, the insulated supports that supported the rotor coils. I'm guessing it's the rotor coils because my memory is dim. Um, so you can create your own earth ground, an ionizing field, an ionized field, and be safe for the FCC, but you have to work that into the motor or something, you know. You got to work it into something. Um, and a motor is, a, is an ideal area, so you've got your, now you've got the chassis of the motor housing instead of the chassis of the car, provided you 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 know make use of all these other features because you want to create a voltage charge a purely electrostatic voltage charge between two references that's all you want to do and you want it connected to the circuitry so it is possible to create our own um, voltage reference to drive the electric keeper you need that and it's separate from the electric keeper that's the beauty of the Barbosa and Leal's um, earth capture circuit is because they recognize that when you separate your voltage reference from your um, amperage loop, 
And that's why you need three different circuits on this thing, three different loops, three different circuits. Then your electric key, then your amperage loop becomes an electric keeper, because there's no voltage to get in the way, and there's no amperage to kill the dipole of the voltage reference. So now, now we're upholding Tom Bearden's admonition not to kill the dipole. So we've got a very interesting circuit here. It's amazing in its utter simplicity. It manages to do. It manages to do so much in creating an over unity situation. It's uncanny. But we do have to adapt it due to, you know, circumstances beyond our control um, in which we have to solve these technical problems. And, you know, what do we do if we don't have an earth ground? Now, Clarence managed to, um, reportedly, uh, give up his earth ground by going to a photovoltaic system, but you can't really put that inside a car. It's a little too big. Um... The picture I saw, his photo bucket picture, a eh, little big. Fine for a home generating power plant, but to put in a car, it's not going to work. So I think the EV Gray system, the um, Richard Hackenberger, might as well give him credit, the Richard Hackenberger system of, uh, of uh, electrostatic field, it, uh, of a regulated, contained, of a contained electrostatic field, not a wild stallion, and making the FCC uh, nervous, <laughs> but a uh, contained, controlled, electrostatic environment of, of a type that satisfies the necessary criteria of creating a voltage difference between two reference points, um, then that techni technicality is resolved, and then we don't have a problem. So it was good that I talked this through, because before I made this video, I forgot about that. You know, it's like, I forgot about that problem, <laughs> and I forgot about the, cons uh, the consequential solution to it. So it was good to jog my memory to talk out loud in front of and look at myself. <laughs> hey, you just like to talk to yourself. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm my best audience. <laughs> anyway, enough of that narcissism. Um, so here we have an idea that's doable. We can literally make Barbosa and Leal mobile and put it in, in, in an electric car. Mm-hmm. <laughs>